Happy holidays and welcome to Logitech G's Christmas. Louise, what are you supposed to be? Where's your elf outfit? This is an elf outfit. Look, sword, ears, leaf. A Christmas elf for the Christmas video that you're currently in. Ha, ah, so you're not Gandalf the Red. No, I'm not Gandalf the Red, because Gandalf the Red isn't a thing. The holiday season is here. Our stockings are full, our stomachs are fuller, and we've finally got time to catch up on a year's worth of great games we haven't yet had time to play. And with festive feels in mind, we thought we'd look at seven things in games that recall the true meaning of Christmas. And by that, we mean not the true meaning at all, but a list of vaguely seasonal things that remind us of the most wonderful time of the year. From disappointing loot boxes to the perils of snow, here are seven times games showed us the true meaning of Christmas. I still can't believe you mixed up elves with elves. They're literally the same word. Are you familiar with the expression less is more? Well, that does not apply here. When it comes to holiday decorations, more is more. Every naked space should be obscured by a wreath. Every reluctant pet should be dressed as some kind of monstrous dog reindeer chimera. Even Dead Space 3, a game in which you dissect reanimated flesh in a frozen wasteland, still has room for some cheerful fairy lights. That looks a lot like my living room. And if we just put this here and this here, so festive, I'm just going to go and turn them on. Games let us go overboard with decorations when we don't have the time, money or space to do so in real life. If you don't fancy risking serious injury by hanging lights on your roof IRL, just festivise your games instead. And in fact, The Sims 4 has a whole DLC package dedicated to making your actual house look like Ebenezer Scrooge's coal shed by comparison. Just, you know, don't set fire to the tree or, you know, your colleagues. Louise? Louise? I feel so festive. Next up, at the risk of sounding entitled, we have something that characterises Christmas for so many of us. Disappointment. Whether it's cracking open endless loot boxes and never getting the skin we want, or terrible rewards for difficult quests, games can easily recreate the unique misery of tearing off wrapping paper to reveal something nobody would ever ask for. It's a bit like opening the final door on your advent calendar and finding Matt waiting behind it. So you did get the advent calendar I made you? You know, got, burned, tried to erase from my memory. All kind of the same thing. So we've established Louise is incredibly difficult to please, but does that mean we're being too critical with this entry? No, no, it does not. Just as it's inevitable you're going to have the odd underwhelming Christmas, you're also going to spend hours completing a game only to get endings that make no sense whatsoever. And for every good reward in a game, you'll get something that nobody would ever ask for. Oh great, Supreme Computo Legs, that's exactly what I didn't want. This then is the gaming equivalent of your grand buying you Battleborn instead of Battlefield. Not bad necessarily, just, you know, not right. Now Louise, I know we don't always get on. I took a little bit too long heroically rescuing you from the Yeti. Uh, I always, always beat you at Let's Plays. So I thought I'd get you a little something just as a means of saying sorry. Firstly, I rescued myself. Secondly, no, you don't. And thirdly, if that is that mechanical hand, I'm gonna Cassandra you through the eyeball. Did you, did you get me anything? Anyone who's ever spent a festive family gathering trying to cram in one more mince pie despite being full will understand holiday excess. And at this seasonal time of year, you can recreate the same thing in games. You can finally splurge all that ammo you've been saving in Resi on a mid-boss because Christmas. And there's nothing quite so liberating as tidying up your inventory, and by that I mean eating everything. Now, of course, trying this in real life is not recommended, but in the spirit of Christmas, Louise is going to try it anyway. Get ready for the Louise Blaine Cabbage Consumption Challenge. No, no. We've already done a video about eating in games, which you can watch by hitting the link in the description. Meanwhile, I'm going to finish this entry in a way that involves me eating precisely zero cabbages. So, as well as eating too much, games have a serious knack of making us want, well, 
even more. Even if someone perhaps already has every single Warhammer game, somehow when the Steam sale starts, you suddenly feel like your library is, well, lacking in everything. And you don't just want one game, you want eight. And those eight aren't solo games, no no, they're bundles of every game in a series, with each purchase netting you literally hundreds of hours of gameplay. And what are you going to do after they've arrived in your library? Play them? No, they're going to be greyed out and ignored. A little bit like an old cabbage that no one would eat. If you were a real elf, you'd love cabbage. Everyone knows elves love cabbage. We all have our festive rituals over the holiday period. Stockings need to be in a certain order over the fire. Only one type of cranberry sauce can go on the turkey. And the tree needs to have that one particular star on the top. And the bodies need to be hidden really carefully because people are more watchful than normal. So with all of these rituals, have you ever really stopped and wondered why? Well, it's because we all love tradition. We all love doing the same thing over and over again. And there's nothing that games enjoy more than making you do just that. Those thousands of hours in Destiny 2 don't rack up on their own. And exactly how many times have you liberated camps in Far Cry? That's right, games just love repeating the same things and not questioning it. And as long as we're being rewarded, we're happy to do it. A bit like what happens when I let you talk about Yakuza again. But you don't let me talk about Yakuza. This level of delusion might require some elf help. As we get closer to the big day, if you find yourself eating chips for breakfast and thinking that cake is an entirely legitimate choice for lunch, you are not alone. Christmas seems to bring out the inner ten-year-old in all of us. Not that we're saying you shouldn't eat cake for lunch, I mean I just did and do most days, but that desire to watch Christmas cartoons on repeat is almost primal. Yes, regressing to your inner child is normal during the Christmas period, but let's face it, games are really good for that all year round. What would happen if I opened the raptor fences in Jurassic World Evolution? Or, ooh, a tornado. It wouldn't be right if I wingsuited safely past it. And, oh, look, Matt. It would be such a shame if someone put him alone in a room without a door and then added a clown of total sadness. Well, that wasn't very festive. Right now I don't feel at all in touch with my inner child. Well, okay, I'm sorry. How about you tell me your favourite childish moments in games and I'll give you a lollipop. <sighs> Ah, oh, thanks for asking, Louise. Well, I like to put buckets on people's heads in Skyrim so I can steal their cheese while they can't see. I like to make Gabe and fight Geralt in Fire Pro Wrestling because why not? And few things in life are quite as uplifting as rolling through barrels in Dark Souls, if only because I cracked my ribs when I tried to do the same thing in real life. If there's another thing Christmas has taught us, aside from how mean Louise can be, is that when it comes to weather, you really shouldn't make any plans to be, well, Anywhere. The holiday season dictates that somehow, despite six feet of the white stuff, we should be happily driving home while listening to Chris Rhea. The reality of this, especially in the UK, is rather different and probably full of swears. Games, on the other hand, are a much better place to experience snow. Whether they're using it as lovely festive set dressing while you beat up goons, or making you trudge through freezing drifts of the stuff, sorry Lara, games love a blizzard or six. Plus, you can risk life and pixelated limb in games like Steep without ever even getting your socks wet, which is a win for everyone involved, except maybe your digital avatar. OK, I'm absolutely not judging your script, but you didn't mention Assassin's Creed Rogue. I also didn't mention Dead Space 3, Saints Row, Skyrim, and sometimes we have to be selective. Oh, go on. Thank you. I'll just put my festive hood up. Ah, much better. Now, Assassin's Creed Rogue is an especially fun, chilly open world to explore because, as well as the conveniently placed snowy piles of hay, you can sail out into the chilly North Atlantic and find penguins. OK, they aren't penguins, they're great ox and they're now extinct, but yay for ice and snow and penguins. And finally, sometimes it's important to just stop and reflect on the true magic of Christmas. Can, can you just stop? What are you doing? What? Pokemon Go. What about the magic of Christmas? Pokemon Go. Never mind. While not all of us seem to be paying attention, magic in games isn't all about spells and wizardry. Although that is there if you go looking for it. In truth, it's everywhere. It's in how it all works, how we're captivated to play every single day, year in, year out, in new ways, and how our favourite characters never fail to make us feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Happy Christmas, Kiryu.
Oh, I didn't realise this was the bit where we were meant to get all, you know, smushy. Well, you don't have to, I just did it on my own. Well, I promise I can feel Christmassy. I'm not like Scrooge. Well, but prove it then. Fine, I will. Good, prove it. I will. Good, Merry Christmas. And you. Great. Games that give me the true magic of Christmas are, well, Stardew Valley, obviously, as I wake up on a cold winter morning and head out to feed my animals with the snow crunching underfoot. But also, I guess, when I play Planet Coaster and realise that I've made something really fun that people are really enjoying. That makes me feel good too. Oh, and I guess, well, I guess us playing together all year, that makes me feel pretty festive and happy inside that whatever we play and, and whatever we do, we're always playing together, Matt. And um, I'm always thankful for that. Merry Christmas. <gasps> this, this was a wind up. I mean, it's literally a wind up. Your real present though is right here. Ooh. <sighs> Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. So that's it for the seven ways that games show us the true meaning of Christmas. Let us know what games you play over the festive season to keep you in the holiday spirit. Drop us a like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, make sure you hit that notification jingle bell so you know exactly when our next video lands.